Right. All right, almost there, everybody. Doc Rivers continues to time and time again not get it when it comes to getting. Oh! Let him play! Good evening, sports fans, and a pleasure to have you here on the Sandwich Sports Show. My name is Dave Medina. You also know me as Dave He's Eating a Sandwich on Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, and all the other platforms. And I'm trying. The camera is really looking gross right now. Let me just fix this for those of you watching on uh, on Twitch at the moment. Oh, come on. Fix, fix. There we go. Uh, wow, that was a process. How's it going, everybody? It's good to see you all again. Well, we are we're joined, we're joined here tonight to talk about the Super Bowl, and we're going to preview the two teams and uh, get into all the predictions, the matchups, and then some other potpourri if we have time for that later. Uh, joining us on this program, we are we are we have we have John in Connecticut and Andy in Seattle scheduled, and um, we'll be doing that for the next uh, hour or so. After that, we'll we'll segue to music. We'll do a hard stop here on the stream. We'll come back to sandwich music here on Twitch. So if you want to hang around for that, absolutely go for it. And then um, at the conclusion of the music s- sh- stream, we can um, we can raid on out. So it'll be a it'll be a it'll be a full night over here on the sandwich show. Um, just waiting for our guests to arrive. Tammy says, go Eagles. I love it. I love it. Um, we, we're getting a lot of Eagles, a lot of Eagles support here um, in Sandwich Show Chat. Like, it's it's actually pretty interesting how much of our group actually is fa- as a fan of the of Philadelphia for this matchup. And I and what we'll do is uh, as we go through the... So we're about halfway through the episode. We can get into... Um, and I hope I'm in the right Zoom thing. I can, that would be irritating if I, were, if I was in the wrong one. It's happened before. It's just kind of ridiculous. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, but but yeah, they, they, we should be joined by our friends in any moment now. Um, but yeah, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to run that poll. We're going to see where everybody is on... Um, oh, there we go. There's John. So I look like we're all right. So at least we got John. We know we have John for sure. Okay. So that's a good way. That's a good way to start. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we'll run a poll about halfway through this episode and, and, uh, see, I mean, how a Twitch poll for those of you listening on the podcast, you won't see it, but, um, but if you're watching our live stream, which you can find at twitch.tv slash Davey's eating a sandwich, you can, you, you can catch, um, all the happenings there. So, um, we'll wait for Andy. Andy probably will join us in a few minute or two, but for now, let's say hello to John. John, good to have you back on the program. 
Um, well, I, I know there's a lot that's happened in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, what's new with you? Nothing much, Dave. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Andy might be going through a Zoom update. I didn't realize we had to update the software, and there I click, and it takes a couple minutes. But, um, yeah, excited for the Super Bowl. Um, obviously, wish my team was playing in it, but it should be a great game. Should be a great game. Uh, you know, the conference championship games. You know, the the NFC game was obviously kind of marred by all the injuries and whatnot, but the AFC was tremendous and set, setting ourselves up for just a, a, a great Super Bowl Absolutely. and, um, you know, all kinds of other stuff going on in sports. So, yeah, it's uh, going be fun here to get back into the mix and have a good show. I like it a lot, John. Um, and uh, we Andy has, in fact, joined us, so the Zoom update must have gone well. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> Andy, uh, just to, we'll, we'll we'll put you in just a second. Let's say hello to King Downbreaker. Um, nice to see you again, and uh, you know it was, it was cool to catch you on stream recently for your birthday. And and Tammy Beck has, has joined us. A big fan of the Eagles. Sandwich for the night. Um, I did. I don't. I think this might be a sandwich today. It's it's rare, but we might have a sandwich tonight. I'm I, I haven't. It's not official yet. I mean, we, I might come up with something later. But I'm not the hungriest, interestingly. So sometimes that happens. Um, all right. So, Andy, give me just a second to just push the button over here. And um, and now, there we go. Andy, hope you're staying warm out there. How's it going tonight? Welcome back in. It's good to see you. Yeah, been a while. Um, uh, where's Junk Man? I'm... <laughs> nah, I... I... Yeah, Junkie has not been a little less than, not hasn't been as big on the. Uh, I mean, he's kind of been dialing it back a little bit as far as the sports scenario, but we did have him on a few weeks ago, so it was pretty good. Um, but I'm fine. Like, how are like what's what? Are, are, can you play golf yet? At, or up in, up there, I would assume you can still play golf, right? Because yeah, not, not uh, cool. you can. Pe- people golf all year round here. Yeah, um, yeah. Not my. It's not my cup of tea to golf when it's cold and wet but people do i mean yeah. actually this weekend you could saturday's a legit golf day but i i will not i will elect to gamble on the basketball text john and and watch watch the phoenix open because that is oh, a yeah. loaded field that is loaded. a loaded field and yeah it's a couch weekend day maybe even start watching some of these oscar nominated movies <laughs> Yeah, that's, I'm a little disconnected well, you, from that these days, but that's a good you idea. You golf where I am, Dave. It's just the weather here is just, I mean, really, don't talk about global warming, but, you know, maybe <laughs> kind of global warming because it's literally going to be almost 60 on Friday, and then next week, Monday through Thursday, it's going to be in the 50s, and it's yeah, that's, you know, that's... beginning of February. So um, if I wanted to golf, I could, but I'm with Andy. It's still it's going to be, like, damp and just kind of yeah. ugly. It, the weather, I... you if, yeah, exactly. The sickos will be out there though, golfing for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, I hear it. Be there. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, how have you how have y'all been doing? How have y'all been doing with the college basketball this year? Like, if you were to do a, like a game summary of your last couple months, uh, I'll let John go first. Okay. I mean, some some nights it's a struggle. Like, I'll have three or four bets, and I'll be like zero oh, and four or one and three, and it's. But then you get like some really bad beats too. Like you could have gone a, like a two and two night, and it turns into zero and four because some kid misses a foul shot, or you know you have a dog that's up by you know four or five points, getting six, and they somehow don't cover. The uh, Villanova Marquette a couple of weeks ago was the prime example of that. That was just horrific. Um, and then some nights you just you the you you feel the fishy lines, and they and they come through. Um, sweating out this West Virginia Iowa State game. I think Andy is on it as well. So. We'll, We'll see if the the Mountaineers can uh, finish this off, but yeah, it's it's a it's a marathon, Dave. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Some days are good, some days are bad. I would say overall, um, probably up a little bit. I have to do the tally. I have my have my spreadsheet, uh, you know, nerd. You know, my spreadsheet uh, counting all my my wagers, and we'll we'll see how we stand at, at when once the tournament starts. But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a fun season. You really get into it once kind of once the NFL. Um, regular season winds down because you know there's not that many football games anymore you turn your attention to college basketball yeah 
It was really good to see North Carolina Duke still be still have juice, even though both teams are unranked. That was a great game. Like I was really into it. Um, Andy, let's go, let's swing it to you for your game summary of your college basketball. Yeah, it's been a great season. I as I mentioned to John off the offline, you know, um, we are a college football degenerate first and foremost, and you know, basketball season starts in early November, and we get into it. Um, begrudgingly it's hard to kind of cherry pick the the sexy games in early November it gets easier in December and then you turn the page to January when um you know by the time the college football final is on on that Monday night and it it doesn't even feel like college football season at that point it's so far removed from campus uh fall Saturday feels and college basketball can step in and now this this February this late February late January the entire month of February in the beginning of March before the brackets are revealed these Saturdays are um, they they mimic the fall Saturdays to a degree it's not the same the pro the one pro over college football that college basketball has is that the games are over in two hours and 15 to 20 minutes. And then you get, so the the slates come every two hours where in college football, especially those big 12 games, it's three and a half, three hours and 45 minutes. There's more inventory arguably to get involved in. And uh, I also do the math and and write down every bet on the spreadsheet. Uh, We've done well so far. I don't want to jinx it, but, uh, and I like I have ten games tonight, like a fool. I I I look at what John Rothstein tweets in the morning, the games to watch, the under under the radar games, and I bet all of those. Uh, sometimes I'll switch one of his under the radar games with a game of my own. Um, but I, as John knows, get your own show probably knows. Like the Big Twelve is is an absolute beast of a conference. It, it's they're fun to watch. Like TCU. Baylor, Kansas, uh, Iowa, no, no, maybe not Iowa State because they can't play the games in March at home, but uh, Kansas State, uh, they all have the potential to go deep. Dave, the biggest game tomorrow, in my opinion, uh, that's not on the, you know, the radar of the casuals is uh, UC Santa Barbara at Long Beach. Uh, oh, yeah. As you, as you know, Santa Barbara is like 18 and 3. Only one team from that conference is going to dance, but Santa Barbara, Irvine, Long Beach, like any of those teams, that's going to be a fun tournament to get into in March. Also, the Colonial between College of Charleston, UNC Wilmy, Townsend, and uh, uh, one other team, uh, Hofstra. Any one of those teams could could win that tournament. It's just... uh, Lots of fun. I, I like betting whenever Belmont and Murray State play. I like betting those games. So it's it's a lot of fun. Like these, the Mountain West is always in a, just an entertaining conference uh, in the regular season. I but saying. I will not. Yeah. I will not take them. I will bet my fanny off. Uh, obviously tonight, for example, with San Diego <laughs> State and Utah State. But uh, when the tournament starts, like. If if Rothstein wants his five teams from that conference to get in the tournament, that'd be great. But I will not be taking them because I I get burnt every year taking the Mountain West teams in the first and oh, second yeah. round. Oh yeah. And this yeah. year I will I will stay away from them. I will fade them. I I, I love them. I love them. But in, in March I I feel like uh, they they just have not done well in the tournament, and I always fall for them in the tournament. This year I will so not. True. If, if they actually perform well. So be it. I, I yeah. hopped off too early, but I, I can't. I can't do it, Dave. I, I cannot I, take San Diego State in the tournament again. I can't take right. Nevada again. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That. Oh my Watch God. Out for Monmouth in the CAA four in a row now. I think hey. They won tonight. Ooh, they nice. beat uh, Stony Brook. They, they beat Stony Brook plus four. I, I was. I wonder. I had. <laughs> We're gonna ride the cover train with the Hawks. Let's go. <laughs> they actually, arguably, they actually have been playing better because they. To be to be fair to to LT like they you cannot floor out you can like 
that floor cannot get any lower than they were. So good for them. Yeah. Winning the <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I really love this. Like I miss, I miss talking basketball with you guys. So like, or you're just sports in general. Like it's really great to see you again. So let's get to it. Let's uh, talk about the Super Bowl. So here it is. Um, not much to, I mean, obviously everybody, everybody knows these teams. Well, there's not much to even get into here. I, oh, not this one. Where'd the other one go? There it is. Cool. So, yeah. So, Super Bowl, Super Bowl 57. Uh, the Eagles versus the Chiefs. State Farm Stadium is going to be the home. Hosted a lot of really good Super Bowls. Like, uh, um, you'll remember the, the, you know, the famous Super Bowl 42, where it was uh, the catch 42 by uh, David Tyree. Amazing stuff. And then uh, kickoff at 6.30. It's at 6.30 Eastern time, as it normally is. Um Actually, I think the favorite's the Eagles. I think I wrote that incorrectly. It's supposed to be the Eagles one, giving one and a half. So sorry about that, folks. But the over under is in fact fifty and a half. Um, and the pregame fest ceremonies are um, pretty extensive. Uh, you, you know, we got Babyface. I haven't heard from Babyface in a while with America the Beautiful. That ought to be great. Uh, Sherry Lee Ralph will do the lift every word, voice and sing. Um, and then the anthem will be by Chris Stapleton, a country star, and and the halftime show will be by Rihanna. Everybody knows who Rihanna is. And uh, the biggest thing for me, as far as the television and, and the hoopla around the the game itself, is that this would actually be the first Super Bowl for Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson in their first season on Fox, which is or the first season as the A team on Fox, which is kind of an interesting spot. I don't think I can remember. A Super Bowl featuring a team in their first year in that position or in that level of like announcing doing a Super Bowl. So I, I wish them the best of luck. I mean, I think they've been okay, but we can talk about that. And John, and you can talk about the game as you talked about. It's uh, it's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a good matchup. Like, I think, you know, you go through the stats, it's interesting. Like, they're all like really close. Like, they're whatever, like yards is the same. Like, you know, a completion is the same. Like it's everything seems to be very even. So it really could go either way. And just to repeat, the the Eagles are the favorite, but it's kind of like an interesting spot because I feel like the Chiefs still have a lot of experience. The really the big X factor is um, Mahomes' injury. So John, I'm gonna give it to you first. Let's get your thoughts on this matchup. Yeah, before I dive into the matchup, wasn't the you're talking about the famous Super Bowls in Arizona? I could be wrong, but wasn't the Patriots Seahawks Super Bowl in Arizona where, um, yeah, you know what, uh, you know, the Marshawn Lynch and they didn't run it in on the one, and then uh, Russ gets picked off by Butler. Wasn't that in Arizona? I, I think like it, it was. was, yeah, good call. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, if, if we get anything like that game, we're gonna be in for a good one on Sunday, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you figure after the two weeks since the AFC championship game that Mahomes, he's only going to get healthier with his, with his ankle uh, situation. And I mean, he was even, he was able to, to, to run in the, in the championship game. I mean, the, the, the famous last play where, you know, granted the, the dude hit him out of bounds. So you had to, you had to call it. I mean, there was plenty of, we wanted to go back to that game. There's plenty of other, you know, bullshit calls that the refs missed, but that one was actually probably legitimate. Um, and then, you know, then Mahomes just completely flopped. But I mean, at that point, like you, you got to do it. Um, but my point, you know, my point is like, he was still, he was pretty mobile then, you know, for having the high ankle sprain and two weeks is only going to help him. The concern for the chiefs was like, they're down to zero receivers basically because everyone was hurt uh, from the practice reports. It looks like they're going to have pretty much uh, most of their guys back. I mean, are they a hundred percent? I mean, that's the question that you have to ask, but um you know, the Chiefs should have some success here against the Eagles defense. I mean, I know the Eagles have been playing really well, but, you know, the NFC wasn't particularly strong this year. Um, you know, if you look at the playoff games, they played the Giants. Okay, and they had a nice season, but no one's going to confuse Daniel Jones with one of the top quarterbacks in, in the NFC or the NFL. Um, and then the Niners just completely – you know, and give the Eagles credit for knocking their quarterbacks out, but Purdy's out in the first quarter. Josh Johnson comes in, and he gets knocked out. Uh, hey, I've got Christian McCaffrey in there, like, throwing Wildcat. So, um, you know, the, the the two, I would say, you know, they played the Cowboys, and Dak had a pretty good game against them uh, on that uh, Christmas Eve game. I mean, he pretty much did whatever he wanted. Um, 
And then uh, the Packers, you know, their offense wasn't, you know, it was hit or miss, but they still put up 30. And Jordan Love looked really impressive against the Eagles defense. So my point being here is that the Eagles defense, I think, can be had. Um, you know, the defensive line is fantastic. I mean, Reddick is, is a beast. Um, but I, I think Mahomes is going to get his. I think their offense is going to do well. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I think Philly is going to have some, some success. We know Kansas City usually struggles with uh, on their run defense. Um, and, you know, for all the talk of Mahomes and his injury, uh, you know, is Jalen Hurts completely 100%? I mean, he didn't look great in the NFC Championship game, but they really didn't have to do much. Um, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the strength of the Eagles is on both of their, their lines, the defensive line and their offensive line. I mean, they can run the ball with, with anybody, Sanders and Gainwell, and then you bring in Boston Scott. Like, they got backs for days. So that probably is going to be, like, their plan of attack to kind of establish the, the run. Um, if the Eagles get ahead, I think that's definitely to their advantage because they're very much of a, a front-running team. Like, I don't know if they want to come from behind in this in this matchup, but um, – should go should go back and forth. Um, Dave, are you, do you want me to give a prediction on the game now, or are we saving that for, for um, later? I mean, we're pretty close to that spot now, but let's just go to Andy first and get his thoughts on the game, and then I guess we could we could probably do predictions right after that. All right. Well, I mean, if we're just going to go to just, I might as well just do it. Yeah, we're sure. gonna, go for it. Yeah. Um. So I I think just because of the strength of the AFC compared to the NFC, I think. I know why the Eagles are favored or are favored because, you know, there's the injury questions and um, the Eagles just look so dominant while the Chiefs are just kind of scratching and clawing. But I think the Chiefs are a better team just be, and just because of Mahomes getting two weeks more to be to be healthy. Uh, I think the Chiefs will win in a close game. Um, the total is like right on the number. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be like 30 to, I don't know. Maybe that's a little too high. Twenty-seven to twenty-one Chiefs, I'll say, for the for the final score. Um, and I think I think Mahomes will will get it. Will be the difference, obviously, and, and and they'll get it done. So I'll go with the Chiefs. Um, and slight lean to the under, just because I think, like I said earlier, Philly is going to want to um, establish the running game more so than than Kansas City. And also, it, almost always in these Super Bowls, like there's a feeling out period in the first quarter, like first quarter under is like a dead winner almost every single game. So I might put that in like one of those same game parlays or just even bet it because it's just, it's always plays out that way. So, yeah. and then the scoring will pick up after that, but that, that's where I'm leading. I'll go with the chiefs 27, um, 21. And then just a quick comment on the broadcasting situation. Yeah. I, I can't remember a time either where, where teams like, First year, I think Burkhart and Olsen were like on the B game or whatever the last year or before then. I, I'm honestly not sure, but I don't mind Olsen. I think he's pretty good. Um, we'll see if Brady's going to take his job. Like that's the whole thing now. I, I don't know if Brady will ever make that contract. To be honest, he might just go off and do whatever with his I life. I, I think Olsen's pretty good. Yeah, Burkhart. Yeah, I don't know. He like his his like loud announcer like voice. Just he it's just. He gets too excited over like mundane plays. Like, dude, it's just like it's a ten yard gain. Just like you need to tone it down a little bit. But I, I do like Olsen. I think he, he definitely adds to the broadcast. If I had to give my opinion on those two. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Like I was wondering wondering what you both thought of those guys. Like I'm pretty in a similar spot. I definitely think Olsen is solid. Like I think he's really fun. He's fun to listen to. He seems to do decent analysis. Burkhardt is fine. Like I kinda like it into Ernie Johnson where he's kinda got that smooth, like laid back voice, but he's trying to push it. And it doesn't, for some people, that doesn't really work. And I think Burkhardt is kind of in that spot. Like, it's kind of like using EJ's voice to try to do Gus Johnson type commentary. And I'm like, I'm not sure if that works, but it's fine. Um, Andy, let's go to your thoughts and let's get your predictions and everything for the game. Yeah, I'm just watching this West Virginia game. They, they, they called the most ridiculous offensive foul on West Virginia. It should have been an and one with the chance for them to go up four. Uh, and then the, and then they call the makeup foul. I hate when they do that. I mean, they, they did a makeup call on Iowa state, but you sh- should not even have come down to that. Just don't screw up the first place. Don't screw up the first time. But anyway, we're just sweating this one out. Um, 
As for the the Super Bowl, I, uh, you know, I know you're having the show about the Super Bowl, but like I, like I don't, I I, I hate the hype. I I don't even really like either team. Um, I, I I like the Chiefs a little more than the Eagles. I, I can't stand Travis Kelsey dancing, flexing. Pretending that he doesn't, you know, when he was on that Manning cast last year, mm-hmm. he's like, who are we playing next week? Like, dude, like, you know who you're playing next week. Don't be a, <laughs> don't be a total clown. But, um, you know, it's 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 going to be a great game, you would think. And now it might not be, but, like, on paper, it should be a good game. I agree with basically everything John has said. Uh, if I had to bet today, I would I would take – the Chiefs. Um, now, if you ask me, if you wanted to have a show about this game last week, I would not have done it because everything was still very fresh. Um, having the Bengals two weeks ago, having the Bengals on the money line, um, buying buying the Bengals live. I, I think the live Bengals bet actually binked, but Bengals plus two did not. And then just very sore about the NFC championship game. Basically uh, the Niners through no fault of their own the injuries happened, but like that was an insult to an NFC championship game. Like we watched, yeah, I know. you know, we watched 17 weeks of regular season football or well, 18 weeks, including the bye, but 18 regular season weeks, the entire playoff in your crown jewel, you know, your two crown jewels, or your AFC championship game, your NFC championship game, and one of them is just an absolute insult to an actual championship game. It just bothered me. And I have no control of it, but it, but it bothered me. And everyone that belittles degenerate for watching Sunbelt and Maction and uh, Bahama Bowl and Myrtle Beach Bowl and Boca Raton Bowl, uh, and they – they like to say how the NFL is such a superior product to all of those entities. Well, shut the fuck up. I just watched your NFC championship game and it was a, it was an insult. Give me 10 Bahama bulls before that 49er Eagle game. That was an absolute joke. That was a waste of time. I was, I think it was the Palm Springs tournament. No, nope, that was the week after I was, I was all, I couldn't even watch Tory cause that ended the day. Before. Yeah. I wasn't watching Tory. I wish I was watching Tory, but um, anyway, I digress. Uh, the wounds heal, but they just opened up briefly on that little rant. But um, I will say this about the Eagles: their coach is very tough to take with the Eminem, and like he he tries so hard to be like a Philadelphia stereotypical loudmouth and like placating to that type of fan. It's like, dude, you're not in Silver Linings playbook. You're not Bradley Cooper, you know. And Bra- I guess Bradley Cooper is an actual Eagles fan too. But uh, it's a good movie. Yeah, I think he's a pretty legit. Every, he's a pretty legit it's fan. A, it's yeah. a really good film. Yeah. But not every Eagle fan has to think they're in Silver Linings playbook. Um, <laughs> I will say this, and you know how Mike's always like, don't compare two sports. But I'm gonna compare two sports. The Eagles, I feel like uh, they might. They might be a year away from actually like winning the Super Bowl. Like this will help them in the same way the the Celtics were favored to beat the Warriors, but they they couldn't get the job done, losing Game Six in horrible fashion at home in Boston. And me being the Celtic Mongo, will be like, well, yeah, this absolutely freaking sucks, um, but maybe this will make them better and they can learn from this. So I think I might apply this theory with the Eagles. Where yeah, they're a slight favorite over the Chiefs. Mahomes might be gimpy. Mahomes might not have his regular assortment to throw to, uh, but he still has Kelsey. And uh, I, as John mentioned, based on the practice reports, they're all going to try to give it a go. And it's still Mahomes, and he's very, very, very good. The Chiefs have a little more of a historical. Uh, backing in these types of games whereas the Eagles everything's fresh you know Jalen Hurts let's not forget how uh nobody thought he would be like a real starter especially after last year's playoff performance but he definitely 
um, quieted his doubters, and, and and they're in a great spot, obviously, but uh, they're not gonna fucking cover. Um, they're, um, but yeah, it's offense versus offense. I don't get all this love the Eagles defense has been getting as of late. I know their D line's really good, and they can. Uh, I mean, yeah, they 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 shut down <laughs> Brock Purdy and and Josh Johnson. Mostly and, Josh but, Johnson. Like it wouldn't Purdy was only and, for some of that. Yeah, mostly Josh Johnson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. And 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 Dan Jones. I mean, Dan Jones turned into an absolute pumpkin. That's not surprising. But um, I. Th- I think back to how awful their past defense was that Christmas Eve game against Dallas. Um, the following week against the Saints, I believe, they didn't look all that good either. So um, I, I I lean towards Kansas City, Dave. Um, Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, like I lean Kansas City. I think, I think Andy Reid has an edge over Serrani. And I will say this, like the NFC just has been kind of a, just a smorgasbord of mediocre, mediocre teams from September through now. Um, And I think the Eagles, through no fault of their own, it's not like they play who they play, but they feasted on this mediocre uh, inventory of teams. And uh, yeah, I mean, they, Look at the path to get to where they are. Dan Jones and Josh Johnson, the the Cliff Notes version of it. Um, and yeah, this is a big moment for him. And I, I just think you 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 might want to lean experience uh, in, in this type of game. And and we'll see what happens to the Eagles next year. But um, I, I'm taking the Chiefs right now at, at this moment. Now I might have a change of heart Sunday morning. Or whatever, but right now, if you wanted my prediction. Um, I'm taking the taking the Chiefs, getting those points. Um, yeah, getting the points. You love the you love the call. Um, what what's your final score prediction? Oh, final score prediction. Um, I'm gonna be mindful of that first quarter nervous lull, feeling their feeling them out. So I will say, I'm gonna sign me up for twenty eight twenty. Kansas City. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I I think we were all on the same page on this one. So, um, first let's say hello to a few full, few of our friends on Twitch tonight. Uh, Primordial Sounds. Go follow Primordial Sounds on Twitch if you're listening on the podcast. Um, and Phil Velo. It's great to see you both again. Great supporters here on our in our Sam fam. So it's really good to have you here. Thank you for, for contributing your points to the uh, Sticks Piano Stream Challenge. <laughs> That's gonna be a fun time. It looks like we're on our way. Uh, Stuart Hayek has joined us too. Who says sad reality for Eagles fans? The best teams they beat this year were Washington and the Vikings. Would you agree with that? I think that's true. I think that's right. If you really think about it, honestly, Detroit might have been the third best team yeah. in the NFC by the end of the year. They didn't make the playoffs, but I mean, the Eagles did beat them. But it was like week one. But by the end of the season, I mean, the Lions were playing great. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think that was a, the the high scoring game too in week one. Yeah, Lions might have. Been it was, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, if I remember, the the Lions came back to get a backdoor cover in the fourth quarter. It was it was pretty high scoring. It's pretty. You you know that's a really really great point. You know we made these points about Stewart is a big eagle is a big Vikings fan, but he was the first to tell everybody like you know what they're they're a paper tiger. They're not that good, and so when we saw them get kicked around by. Um, who would that would that have been would that have been filled would that have been filled I think well, so. Well that, that the Washington game was hideous. The one the, the Monday night game, I think they, they lost pretty bad to the to the commanders. Uh, yeah. 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 Verify that. And the other one they lost was uh the Christmas Eve game in Dallas because Minshew started, but they still scored like thirty something points. I mean they're yeah, he didn't play that bad. I mean he had a couple of turnovers, but I mean and if you had, if you had told them before that game, like, yeah, the offense is gonna score thirty four points or whatever it is, you would have taken it all day long. There's just, you know, their defense couldn't stop Dallas, and then they did have a couple turnovers. But, yeah, those are the only two games. That, other than the Saints game that they lost with uh, Minshew was was in there. But, yeah, other than that, I mean, they had a had a, had a great season. But, like I said, I mean, the, <laughs> I mean, obviously the Niners would have put up a much better fight if, if Purdy – even if Purdy stayed in the entire game, they would yeah. have put up a much better fight. But um, I'd say – 
the Lions were definitely the third or fourth best team in the NFC by the end of the season. Yeah. And I even I remember the Packer game. That was the Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. I took yep. the Eagles to cover, and we had to hold on yep. for dear life with Jordan Love slinging that rock. At the yeah. End. Yeah, he looked good. That's why, like, I don't know, we're, we're getting off a rant now. But, like, Aaron Rodgers can go in his dark room for I don't know how long he wants to do it. But you know what? I love the guy. Like, he's brought us – in, in, you know, Packers fans, so many memorable moments. But, like, you want to go to the Jets, the Raiders? Fine. Like, let's. I'm ready for Jordan <laughs> Love. Like, I'm, I'm ready for the next the next era here. Because he, I think I think he's ready to play. And, like, what's the definition of insanity? Like, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Like, this is three years in a row now. Like, in the biggest game at home that, you know, Rodgers was not at his 100%, you know, uh, uh, capability and, and like what he's what he's shown he can proven to do and I just think it's time to to start a new a new era so yeah give me give me Jordan Love and Christian Watson and Romeo Dubs next year and you know we'll, we'll see how it goes I love the call I I think it's I mean I think we yeah like you said like there's not there's only I think the 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 moment has sa- the ship has sailed. I think is the way is a word you use for for Rogers, and it's cool. I mean, he's had a great he's got a great career. He's had a great career, but Jordan Love is a future for sure. I want to just point out your comment, John, as far as the Eagles' pass defense. They definitely can be had. I feel like there were guys open during that NFC Championship for San Francisco, and they just couldn't get the ball to them. And so I just feel like if you try that against Mahomes, they're going to get torched. So um, just to kind of get to drive this home. My prediction, and I wrote this down before we started the show. Um, I have Chiefs twenty-seven twenty. So our scores are wow. so similar. Like John, you have twenty-seven twenty-one. Andy has twenty-eight twenty, and I have twenty-seven twenty. So that's kind of that's kind of wild. <laughs> Just like we we're so close. So now it's going to be Eagles thirty to ten <laughs> based on that. Yeah, uh, like-minded ding dongs. That would. <laughs> Did you get the that cover, Andy? I was giving four for West Virginia. Yeah, three and a half here. The guy nice. almost made the half court yeah, shot. I know. I, yeah, I was about to throw my laptop across the room if he did. That's <laughs> what it's all about, folks. Um, Stuart Hayek says, "Will Aaron's contract go with him, or will the pack the pack take a cap hit just to get rid of him?" Yeah, I, I have to look into like the exact finances of it, but I think there's like a certain date where like they can they can trade him by, and there's like all sorts of money that can be moved around. And mm-hmm. I mean, these teams are they know how to work the cap. I mean, I, I, if a deal wants to get done, it'll it'll get done. But I, I don't think the the money will be um, an issue for either side. So, and I mean, they're already talking about like you no, know, there's he's throwing out hints of going to the Raiders, and then. You got the guy from the Jets saying, oh, yeah, I know something. Like, I'd be pretty surprised at this point if, if he's back with the Packers. And if he is, I'll root for him. But like I said, I'm just ready for for a new a new era here with, with Jordan Love. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of support pieces in place, too, for, for Green Bay. So I feel like if you if you make the move, it might be for the bet. It might be to their benefit. And it might be a little, you know, like it doesn't guarantee any, like, playoff like a, like a division championship or anything like that. But I think it's a, you're right. I think it's a good decision. Um, we just put a poll up in the chat for those of you watching on Twitch tonight. Um, who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? You have five minutes to vote and feel free to pitch in your, your pick. Um, we had, we have speculated that a lot of the contingent of the, the Sam fam community has been on the Eagle side. Like we've already heard from several people who were rooting for them in the Super Bowl. Um, so we all predicted the chiefs. Now I think, I think we were saying that you were rooting for them anyway. I'm actually rooting for the Eagles more just because I think that would be kind of, but to be honest, like it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm fine with either team winning. So I don't, I'm not, I don't have a particularly strong feeling towards either side. So, um, are you both rooting for the chiefs as well? If yeah, as right now, cause I'm, I would be betting on the Chiefs, so yeah, I would be okay. rooting, rooting all the yeah. way, like Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. Not gonna put my money on them and then root the other way, Dave. <laughs> well, you know. yeah, definitely. When when the point spread's only one and a half, like you kind of have to, right? <laughs> just like, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it. One of the things about um like betting bowl games is when it's like a a point and a half for 
uh, this is something that uh, I learned from the the guy that me and Andy follows on Twitter. Like he's from the Action Network, but he's all, he always talks about how you know if it's plus one and a half, like bet the spread. Like usually you would just bet the money line, just like whatever. It's it's a pick 'em game, but bet the plus one and a half because sometimes if at the end of the game, like a team might go for two because who cares? It's like it's just a stupid bowl game, so you could end up that one point or point and a half could really make a difference. I feel like. That could that could be a scenario here because like the Eagles love to go for two. It's like you could see a lot of different combinations of scores here where you could lose by one point. So I think, I mean, I I don't know if the line's going to flip, but if it stays like a plus one and a half, I won't take the Chiefs money line. I'll just I'll just, I'll bet the spread to plus one and a half for that very reason. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, because yeah, we can't think of that type. John, what was the bowl game? Was I think it was Arkansas, Had to be Arkansas. Kansas. Yeah. In, in that instance, I, they didn't go for two. That's why they had all those overtimes, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I think no. The, Kansas went for the two to tie it up to get into overtime. That's, yes. But then on the first overtime, rather than going for two, Pittman kicked it, and they went to the next overtime. Yeah. So I don't understand and, why he didn't go for two there, but whatever. It's a That's great question. Right. And and once they got to the third overtime, they were screwed because you only go yeah, to two-point conversions. You had to go for the alternating two-point conversions yeah. at that point. So anyone who bet Kansas, I think it was plus two and a half, was, yeah. you're, you're in. Unless, you're good. unless, like, yeah, unless the rare scenario where Arkansas would get the, their two and then take off and then run it back and win by four, I don't know if they would, if they would blow the play <laughs> to bed. I mean, that would be like the worst like beat of all time. Yeah, yeah exactly. A- yeah. So... <laughs> I had Arkansas. No, that's going to happen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> now, that game, I'm getting residual pissed off about that game now because I, I had Arkansas and I was on the way to the airport from Palm Springs and they were literally up like 14 or maybe even more. Oh, yeah. like eight minutes it was like left. 15 with like two minutes left. It was crazy. And they, they had the ball too. And then they, they the fumbled ball. it on, on a crazy reverse that it was like 50 50 whether he had his, like, his knee was down. And then Kansas goes down the field and scores. They get the onside kick. They go down the field and score and then get the two-pointer. Just unbelievable game. Like, this bowl season really delivered, I have to say. Yeah, I, mean, I know yeah. the national championship game was shit, but whatever. I mean, it's sports. That happens. But a lot of those games are just tremendous. It really was. It was a great bowl season. I mean, I'm – you got we want to call me a contrarian or you know anti purist or whatever like what the hell's wrong with you? I mean all fair but like I love the mid December I love that first weekend of bowl games the New Mexico Bowl New Orleans Bowl Vegas Bowl I love those you cannot beat those bowls the Cure Bowl oh yeah well because the teams they're you know the group of five like they don't have a, like a million opt outs you know before the before the game, like their team wants to be there and like wants to play. I mean, I know like UConn didn't have a great game. Like they just were just too nervous to start off. Well, like, I don't think they had anyone opt out of that game because they wanted to be there and they wanted to play. Like compared to the um like the uh like the Notre Dame South Carolina game, which did end up being pretty good, I will say. Yeah. But each side had like 30 guys not playing. And same with you know NC State and Maryland. Like some of these games are just ridiculous with the amount of players that weren't playing. So I mean, that's I guess that's the one downside of of bowl season nowadays. But hey, it is what it is. You you handicap what's in front of you, and you you pick to the the best of of your knowledge. So I'm not going to complain too much about it. I hear it. Oh, uh, just to give you an update on the poll, and uh, let's say hello to Breddington Frothing Slash and Brad Lauren Ipson, uh, both awesome awesome friends of ours here in our sam- sandwich community and uh both of them stream so give them a follow over on and the, the links in the, are in the chat if you're watching on twitch tonight even if you're not watching on twitch tonight go over to twitch.tv and look for them uh, at those respective handles so uh the results of the poll the eagles win 75 percent to 25 percent wow so the people in the chat really want the eagles to win this game um so yeah that's an interesting spot i i, I think for me what i would do Seeing the way we picked the scores, I think this would work, this would work out. Like, I think what you do is you take you do a teaser of the Chiefs, tease it up to seven, and uh, yeah, like seven and a half. Is that right? Yeah, right. seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. Teaser. Seven and a half, and then uh, under fifty six and a half. That's pretty good. I feel like that has a real shot. I don't know, but uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, John, any other thoughts in the Super Bowl before? We, we continue with other stuff. 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, I wish I would talk about sports all the time. But then I think to myself, you know, you have to talk about the one game for two weeks for like hours and hours a day. Like what, <laughs> what, like, what else can you say about it? I know. You know, this is, you know, I, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it should be a great game. Um, you know, I'm sure have some different prop bets and like, you know, one of the sites is offering like one of those risk-free same game parlays. So I'll, I'll dive into to some different props and stuff to try to try to hit that. And it'll be, a, it'll be a good time. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to like this huge party. I'll just be like, you know, family and friends. So like there'll be no one really annoying there watching the game. Like I'll be, I'll be cool with everybody that's there. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll watch the golf leading up right into the, uh, the Super Bowl. And hopefully that delivers. It doesn't too. go into a, yeah, hopefully it will. I mean, four out of the last five years, Got it's gone to a playoff. playoff. So yeah. I, I think we're going to bet a prop. Will this event go into a playoff? Because every year it goes like into the first quarter, basically the the golf tournament. But yeah, with the field they got this year, it should be phenomenal. And honestly, th- that golf tournament's in Phoenix, so I'm surprised that they didn't do the uh, Wednesday to Saturday this week with with all those like people there. Like it's just going to be yeah, just a, a rush of people maybe going from the golf tournament to the game. I don't know if you can get tickets for both or. You know, with you know, Philly fans are going to be there. Like the crowds need to be more rowdy than usual. Like yeah. on the the 16th hole, it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. And maybe if, if there's another hole in one, they'll throw all sorts of beer at you know Colt Nost and uh, Amanda. <laughs> Matt, uh, Amanda know, Renner. Renner, 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 Amanda yeah, yeah, Renner. Yeah, yeah. Now that's her last name. They're going to be yeah. throwing beer at them sitting by the 16th tee. That was phenomenal. <laughs> that's another prop that we should put in for right the hole in one. It's probably well. See, they, they, oh, it's out there. But the only thing is like. I feel like the PGA Tour might set up like a favorable pin position on uh, just to get that to happen. Like oh. they might put it behind like a slope where you could spin it back in or something. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I feel like they want that to happen. So it's it's more likely to. I mean, still, you know, a hole in one is a, you know, it's, it's it's a hard thing to do. But I feel like they could try to make it easier with the with the pin location. Yeah, that's they're gonna give. They're gonna there's gonna be a lot of juice in that bet. Probably like giving like. I don't know, like a 180, 200 even maybe at that point. I don't know. I didn't look at it. Um, Brad Lord Mipson, by the way, um, lives in the Phoenix area. So our friend Brad is in on the scene, and he and he, and he says, I have $20 to win $120 on the Eagles. Was that a futures bet, Brad? That's a great yeah. bet. Wow. <laughs> Stuart Hayek says, bye-bye money, LOL. Well, I mean, if you go by our predictions – Maybe hedging would be a good idea here, Brad. Brad. Oh, before the championship. Gotcha. Right. Wow. It's pretty good. But yeah, I know. But seriously, like, you know, John, you know this. Like when the with the Super Bowl, with the World Cup scenario, like you have to hedge in that scenario. I think, regardless. So it's the way to go. I mean, it depends on like what the money means to you. Like for that kind of, you know, for me, that if I was gonna win a hundred dollars, like I wouldn't. I would just let it ride. But like in the scenario that I had, like it was for a grand it's like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna hedge a little bit for that i yeah. mean it all depends on you know what what it what it means to you and how you feel about it i mean yeah. everyone makes their own decision in the end with that kind of thing that's true and and brad's a big eagles fan too so i mean yeah he's not yeah, gonna no way his birds anyway yeah absolutely not yeah um all right andy let's get your thoughts on golf like first of all like i i i think we should recap the farmers too like i i, I wonder was there any juice there and then we'll we'll, we'll move ahead towards the to their waste management open uh, I mean, the farmers was, it was strange because of the, the Saturday finish. Um, I, um, I'm actually, you want to, let me just talk about AT&T real quick. Though. Oh yeah, go for it. Absolutely. 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 Um, <laughs> that event, and I don't know. What a shit show. Yeah, what a shit <laughs> the, the show. The program, right? The program, or is it, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, the, the entire oh. event, like the the, the, the oh, Monday sure. finish was annoying. The they they canceled the the play on Saturday not because of rain, but because it was too windy. The amateurs, you know, like Aaron Rodgers is a legit hand, a legit sandbagger. Like Keith Mitchell, he's no he's no day at the beach either. To be fair, but he was pissed <laughs> off that. He didn't win with Josh. He was like legit pissed that he didn't win the pro am with Josh Allen because Aaron Rodgers was playing off a ten, but he's really like a three. And um, 
Then you got Mac, like Macklemore's out there. It's just, it's a neutered, it's a neutered event now. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just Pebble Beach is obviously, a, it's a bucket list place. I, I want to play there before I die. Um, but that, that tournament, it's no, the golfers don't want to play six hour rounds. Like guys like Speed probably have to play that every year because he's sponsored by AT and T, um, so he's going to be there every year. Dustin Johnson used to be there every year, but he's on live now, so he can't play in it. Um, but that event in February, like the weather's never really that good. Clearly this year, um, Monday finishes suck even when Nance is there. Although the weather was great on Monday morning, but it just it was just it was a neutered and fractured tournament. Justin Rose is arguably the person that got the suspension in effect on Saturday because he was crying about the greens on Monterey Peninsula Country Club or wherever it was. I think it was Monterey because um, Pebble and Spyglass they didn't have the as as dire of a problem as as Monterey for whatever reason, um, and. I don't know what is when Pebble Beach hosts the U.S. Open. It's totally different because the grass is longer. It's in a different time of the year, um, and there's no amateurs. Um, so yeah, the Pebble Beach program has. Uh, I don't know. It's it, it's got some soul searching to do. They're not going to move the event. They're not going to move it to a different time of the year because it's the West Coast swing. They're not going to move it to June when you know the the tours in John's backyard with the travelers and. You know, a U.S. Open, like an East Coast U.S. Open, you get you get my point. But um, the Farmers was, you know, Max Homa. John mentioned he wish he took Max Homa from the rear on Saturday uh, or on Friday night because that was after round three. But we, we all whiffed on that. Um, Farmers is another tournament that's that I'm kind of hot and cold with. Mostly, mostly hot, though, because it's, it's a pretty good event. Nance is there remotely. You know, Tories. A, a lot of people. You're you're familiar with the South Course more than the North Course, but uh, we are slowly getting into the meat and guts of the of the PGA Tour season. As, as crazy as that sounds, next week you love the LA Open, um, and then they. I think there's a little detour in, in Mexico, and then they do the Florida Swing and the the match play. Is it not? Is it not in Austin this year, John? Did they move it, or is it still in Austin? No, it's just, it's still there. But I read a story that basically they um, they were like trying to re up the, the PGA Tour, and uh, they tried to play hardball, and basically the tour said get lost. And um, the the future of the match play event is very much up in doubt for next year. Um, so that event might be going away. Not to say that there might there wouldn't be a match play event. It would just be a, a different tournament, and that another tournament like the Houston Open could slide back into to that part of the schedule. So uh, lots of jockeying to be going around. But, yeah, basically this might be the last year at the Austin Country Club, which kind of upsets me because I like that course, and it's really cool for, for match play. So, yep. yeah, I'm a little little bummed about that. But, hey, you, you can't you can't win them all. So Yeah, I love that Austin course because that 18th hole, it's a short par four, not drivable per se, but it's like – it's very birdieable and it, it, it offers some juice at, at, at the end of those matches. It's a good course for match play because uh, they got some, got some gettable holes there. Yeah. They, hopefully they could fix it. I, I can watch match play till the cows come home. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, especially uh, if it's a final with two guys that don't really bring the juice. There's a lot of, dead air to fill and if it's paul easinger you're better off just listening to music <laughs> yeah. Flash, yeah my oh. god um but yeah dave like we're we're into pga you you know we whatever you want to talk about for the rest of the show golf hoops food, <laughs> whatever yeah no I, I mean this is pretty good it's that's pretty good i mean um john i, I did want to get your thoughts on waste maybe you're you kind of already hit it well a little earlier in the show but Feel free to get into any poker you had on your mind uh, as we. Yeah, go. the golf season is it's 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 going. Um, yeah, I echo the same thoughts about Pebble Beach. Just a horrific tournament, and you know they really don't have a choice. I mean, you know, you're not going to kick it off the tour schedule, and the way these events have have broken down now with Phoenix uh, this week's tournament. 
being the, the, the quote elevated event, which means the purses are up, the points are up. You're going to bring all the top guys to play. And the same thing with the following week in LA, it's the same. It's just a huge tournament. So, you know, the guys they're not going to play every single week. So pebble is what gets hurt and, um, you know, and add that to the, the amateur situation and the, just the weather's not great. And it, it leads itself to being a, a poor field, but Hey, you can't have the golf season is literally 46 weeks long. Like you, you can't have a great tournament every week. So there's going to be some, some down tournaments. It sucks for them because it used to be a, you know, a staple in the PGA tour, but it's just, just a week now where there's not going to be a great field and they just have to, I guess have to accept that. Um, what I do think would help is if they, if they can the amateurs and they said, all right, we're going to play all four rounds of Pebble beach. I think, I think it could be decent, but, you know, I don't know the, the contractual obligations with AT&T and, you know, if they have to have the program in there. Um, the tournament, the American Express is a program too, but you never see hardly any of the amateurs because it's, you know, it's all the the corporate CEOs that are that are with the PGA Tour. Like, you don't want to see, you know, Bob from accounting from FedEx hit his tee shot on the on the par three. <laughs> right. on, We've talked about uh, that. Seven, you know, on yeah. the American Express because no one cares. But like, when you... But when you switch him for Aaron Rodgers, it's like, yeah, people care. They want to, they want to see that. So, I don't know. They're in a tough spot, but it is what it is. Like I said, like you know, there's going to be down tournaments all year in, in a couple of weeks after we hit this great stretch of um, waste management, and then uh, the LA tournament at uh, Riviera. They go to the Honda Classic, which is going to be another real, like really poor field. But hey, that's just how it is. Like you're, like I said, you can't have all these great tournaments. Um, every week can't be great. So um, that's just the ebbs and flows of the schedule. There's there's betting opportunities every single week. I find like the the weeks where there's the shittier field, like you have a better chance of making some decent money. Just this last week, like Justin Rose was like 40 something to one. I personally would not have bet him. Like I was not not a fan of him, but um, those are some good odds. Like this week, n- there's going to be probably nobody under 30 to one is probably going to win this tournament. Um, just because when you get like this this collection of players together, uh, the way the golf is right now, like one of these top guys is going to win. I'd be very surprised if one of the top uh, doesn't win. Um, I, for the record, I bet uh, I bet Hideki Matsuyama. I bet Sahith Tagala. That was my one kind of long shot. Um, and I bet Xander Shoffley. Uh, and I bet Colin Morikawa. So right there, I bet three of like were the top four guys right there. And then I have one kind of long shot. But yeah, if this was like Pebble, like I was betting guys like 80, 90 to one last week that could have, you know, could have jumped up there and won. But, um, you know, that's just that's just the nature of the of the field. And, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tremendous. And it, it's kind of like their answer to live. I don't know. Like, honestly, like live is not registering with anybody at this point. Um, I did see that right. they got a broadcast deal on the CW. So, <laughs> yeah, there we go can watch your teenage heartthrob shows and then you can watch some Saudi <laughs> golf right after it. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great time. They really CW go to, with, I mean... live, with live golf. Um, their first tournament, I think is the week of the Honda classic. So actually st- good strategic scheduling on their part, because like I said, the Honda classic is going to be just a shitty field. So might as well throw on live for a little bit. And I believe it's in Mexico. So it's going to be like, okay. Like in terms of the, the hours where we can view it, but I mean, the tournaments, they, they literally mean nothing. It's just it, I, its just fascinating to see where this is going to go from here. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, on a week where the PGA is not offering its best, like, field and product, like, yeah, I'll, I guess we'll watch live. But long way to go for them. And, um, like I said, we'll we'll continue to follow the progress. And um, it'll, it'll be really interesting when, like, the live guys show up to the majors this year. Like, most, like, casual golf fans will have not seen Cameron Smith since the open championship and he's just going to show up at the masters and we'll see how he does. So that's going to be a really interesting dynamic um, coming up here in a couple of months. Yeah, no doubt. It. Yeah. I was just, th- I was just thinking about that. Like, you know, how are they going to play this out for majors? Like we, you know, the mass, like you've mentioned the masters and it's going to be an interesting time for golf. We've talked about that before. So, you yeah, know, they can play, they can play in the masters. I, I don't know what yeah, they can do for the British open, but they've been able to play, the court, the European court is going to make a ruling pretty soon. But 
up until that, they like they technically can still play some of the DP events. So uh, I know John was paying attention that when they when they were out in Dubai, like Rory was there, and obviously like, but a lot of all the live guys was was there. Uh, Patty Reed and oh yeah, him and Patrick Reed, Reed had a little dust up with the with the teeth drawing there. That was big news. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. but. Um, Unless Dave, you're like, don't talk about golf anymore. But I just to expand on what John said about like these events, they all have different heartbeats. They go up, they go down. Like, but Pebble and Honda are definitely two events that are dying on their vine. Like Honda, like that is in the backyard of like a lot of pros. They all live like in that town, like North Palm Beach or whatever. Um, and it's Jack's golf course. Like it's a and it's a good layout and it's a hard track, but for whatever reason, that event, is, it's literally dying on the vine. And then conversely, like John's tournament in Connecticut, oh, yeah. 15 years ago, that event did not attract the field that it attracts now. And now like Rory's there every year. It is a great field. The timing's great. It's right after the U S open and it's uh, they take care of the, the golfers. So like from a hospitality standpoint, like, that is a – I don't know if it's an elevated event, but it's a great event. and it's Yeah, it is actually. It, it got the designation this year. So it's going to have this, just like this week's field. Um, so as soon as the, the email goes out to get, like, your corporate hospitality tickets, I am I am there. So uh, yeah. it's going to be fun. And, yeah, like I said, like 15 years ago, like, that was not – yep. not have guessed it would be an elevated event. And then there's events like, um, you know, when the Shell Houston Open was the week before – the Masters, that was a big field because the golf course was kind of a replica of Augusta. And now the Houston, that is not even at that course anymore. And it's in, it's like in October. So all these events have, they have different heartbeats. Um, How about another one, Byron Nelson? Like that used to be a huge event, I remember, like 10, 15 years ago. I mean, it was mostly when because when he was still alive and, you know, he's passed since. But now it's at this bunny ranch course that's like it's like a, a disgrace to the game of golf like it's like 30 under par is the winning like that's like one of the worst tournaments of the year in my opinion yep yep yeah and it's just like they're even saying like bay hill is starting to lose a little bit of its shine and like you never have guessed that like 10 years ago like arnold palmer's golf course like that's that should be a loaded field even and it's an invitational but again they're saying like it's not as attractive for, for the players anymore whether it's like where it is on the calendar or whatever. And yeah, so the live, the, the live is just, it's hilarious. I watch it. it like now it'll even be easier on CW and we'll be gambling on it, but it's, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's like not even watching, like I can't compare it to watching FCS football to division one football. It's, it's not that type of comparison, but it, it's just weird. It's got a weird feel to it. The presentation's different. The music's different. But some of the courses that are hosting tournaments this year, it's the Greenbrier, John. Did you know that? One of their events is going to be at the Greenbrier. Yeah, course. I saw that. That's like kind of a big F you to the PGA Tour grabbing that course for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I noticed that there's not too many um, international ones. I thought I saw there was – they're going back to the course in London. They got Valderrama in Spain. Um, they have like one in, in Singapore, I think, and then one in, in Saudi. And then other than that, it's like all Mexico and the U S which was, I thought was pretty interesting that like they're trying to promote like, Oh, then they have one in Australia too. I forgot that because they wanted to get like Cam Smith and all those guys. But yeah, there's, there, there's only like four or five international events and the rest are, are in the U S or, or Mexico. Yeah. It's going to be wild. Like, yeah, like you said, the casual fan, like, Hey, Oh, we get to see Brooks Kepka and DJ Sergio. A lot of green jackets are on the lift tour and they'll be at Augusta in a mere, you know, seven weeks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. before we move on, what do you think so far of um Nance and Immelman? I know it's only a couple weeks, but what's what's the feel? Like you gotta give it time, obviously, um, just to see how it goes. But I don't know. I feel like I'm going to be missing Faldo as the season goes on, but we'll see. I'm, I'm not a not a big Immelman fan just yet. 
I haven't sampled enough to really have an opinion. Um, Andy, would you have a feel for that? So my my thought on that is, like, I was not a Faldo hater. Like, Faldo was, like, you knew what you were going to get with Faldo. Like, a little t tinge of, like, all about me. I mean, but what are you going to do? He's got a reference in playing career when he's talking about golf. And, like, these players are going, they're feeling this. I used to feel this way. You know, coming down the stretch of a back nine of a big tournament. Um, my thoughts on Immelman is like we already have Mark Immelman, <laughs> like Trevor Immelman. They're they're kind of they're brothers. Mm -hmm. They talk similar. <laughs> it's like it's a little more. Uh, it's just kind of Immelman overkill. I would argue like like more Colt, more Colt, more Frank Nobolo, less. Immelman, less Ian Baker Finch, less Dottie Pepper. Oh, yeah, that's, I agree. That's my thought on, on it all. Um, yep. and, and we'll see how NBC does with their shakeup in a couple of weeks because they have a whole new a whole new crew. But unfortunately, Azinger is still there. So doubt it's going to do much for us. Azinger is an insult to, like, he <laughs> said, he, he just, he doesn't prepare at all. He's just filled with, like, it's one thing to be filled with cliches, but, like, he he's just like he's he's very anti like foreign player like he's never like Matt you can't say about Matt Fitzpatrick anymore because he won U.S. Open he's like yeah hey. he's like this guy's never won on the U.S. tour he's never won on the PGA tour who he I don't know if he's got the chops to to get it done and he used to say that about uh, I actually remember the Scottish Open Tom Kim. When Tom Kim like missed a putt to either like get into a playoff or get second place, and but he was smiling afterwards because it was like his best finish ever. And what Azinger said about Tom Kim was like, I don't know why he's smiling. Like I would, I would be hot under my collar if I were him. And like, what happens to Tom Kim? Like I think he won like the Wyndham later that yep. year. And he 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 put on a show in the President's Cup. And he is uh, he is a rising star. So take that up your take that up. <laughs> take that easier. He isn't such a clown. What a joke! But um, I love it, guys. Thank you for. I actually was looking forward to this part of the show too. Um, the only thing I just want to make sure I mentioned because I I would not be a proper sports broadcast if I didn't. But uh, LeBron breaking the NBA all time scoring record last night was great. It was really great to watch that. Like it, he. He scored his 38,388th point um, in the third quarter against Oklahoma City, and uh, it was just good to see that. It was really cool stuff. Kareem was in the building to watch it happen, he stopped the game, you know, did all the stuff. And, you know, I've, we've all said things about LeBron James over the years, and certainly everybody knows that I've been back and forth with, with him. Um, but honestly, that was great. And uh, he's one of the all-time greats, and there's no reason for me to think otherwise at this point. Um, that's about it. I don't. I mean, I don't know if you have anything to add about that, but can't really shade that. Like that was just an incredible moment. And great job out of him, staying healthy all this time too. Like that's hard to do. Yeah, and then the Lakers lost. So yeah, I know, I know, but no one's gonna remember. <laughs> leave that. it to leave it to the Lakers to to blow <laughs> that historic moment by losing to the Thunder is what like a eight point favor or something yeah. I, honestly about... dave like i don't the nba like it's just it, I, god bless you if you bet the nba i know i was pitching earlier about college basketball like bad beats or whatever but like <laughs> with this load management from night to night like who the hell knows who's even playing like how can you how can you even bet the nba um well, and, you know so I, I stay away until until the playoffs I... but have done decently with it you've been doing pretty good no good for you I, it, and only because i can figure out like usually I can get the sense for like, mo like you said, like kind of like like who's gonna be up for a game. I look at ATS records; that helps too. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying, but it's 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 surprisingly gone well. But you're right; like it's it, they're basically you're betting preseason games like the whole year. <laughs> so I don't know. I've gotten lucky. I think is what how I would attribute that. Um, that's about it. Andy, anything else you want to add before before we uh, wrap things up here tonight? uh nba i i've been betting more nba this year than previous years i, mm -hmm. I mean i'm betting on the celtics i i bet uh you know the t if it's a spicy tnt matchup on thursday or tuesday 
or if it's a good ESPN matchup, I'll, I'll get involved. Like tonight, I took the Celtics minus four and a half. Celtics actually uh, don't really do a ton of load management with Tatum and, and, and Brown. They do it with like Robert Williams and to a degree, but he's, you know, he doesn't really move the needle. You really got to watch out with guys like uh, Giannis on Milwaukee, um, the Clippers, obviously, with yeah. Kawhi and Paul George, Jimmy Butler on the Heat. Um, they don't really move like Jimmy Butler. He's all like he's always kind of taking games off just because he can, and you know he, he's getting up there in age. But um, you know the NBA. You know I'm not like sports pope that watches it day in and day out. But, you know the Kings have been a good story. Yeah, the yeah. Nuggets. The Nuggets are fun to watch. It could be a. I mean, it could be a Grizzly Nugget Western Conference Final. You know that's not gonna that's gonna scare away a lot of the fourth quarter only casuals. You know, sure. But um, you I'm, know, I'd be the there Celtics, for it though. Yeah. Of, yeah, I mean, all of us on the show will. We'll all be gambling on it too. But um, you know, like the Warriors will probably find their equilibrium at some point. Like, um, the Clippers are always a, sh- a mockery. But yeah, I mean, Denver. Um, the Kings, they're, 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 you know, there's, there's some good storylines if you want to, if you want to follow it on a day in and day out basis. Um, I was actually, I did have a TV on the Laker um, just when LeBron was six points away, I, I turned it on and I watched the presentation and then we were watching um, uh, New Mexico, uh, New, New Mexico, Nevada, uh on the on the big screen when, when that was taking place um that yeah because mountain west that's a good game nevada won at the buzzer but anyway like what are you talking about but yeah it's um <laughs> it's just it's a it's winter time we're watching a ton of basketball yep. watching a little bit of hockey excited for golf tomorrow we'll be watching that at, at work um yeah you know su- super bowl's coming it's the days are starting to get a little longer it's 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 not dark walking out of the office anymore at five o'clock. So we're here. I love it. I love it. Well, fellas, I, I and by the way, who would you have in you know a couple of big trades this week? Um, I just saw that the Lakers traded to get uh, D'Angelo Russell back in a three-team trade, and earlier in the week, or maybe oh, been, Kyrie. Ugh. Yeah, I was gonna say Poor Kyrie Dom. went to Dallas, and I'm like, thank. I'm just glad he didn't go to the Poor Lakers. Luka, right? Poor Luca. Yeah, two probably. ball, two guys that love the ball. <laughs> I that's gonna that is I just don't see that ending well for Dallas here, and they're gonna play and the Clippers. Jason as, Kidd's a pretty no nonsense coach. Mm-hmm. At least he was with the Bucks. That's why they fired him. I can't see it. Just yeah. it never ends well with Kyrie. He's poison. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> Parcells is in the chat. Knicks just traded for Josh Hart. Woo. What's up, Barcelona? Good to see you again tonight. <laughs> Josh Hart. Oh my gosh. Start printing those. I'm plays. surprised he's still in the league from Syracuse. Well, yeah, Nova. he used to play for the Lakers. Like he oh, was Nova. Yeah, that's Nova. Yeah. He is Nova. Yeah, yeah. I remember Josh Hart. He was on the Pelicans for a while. Either the Pelicans or the Hornets. I forget which one, but but one of them. Um okay, thank you for your for for your points, by the way, for the uh, community challenge. So, okay, cool. I'll just do final thoughts. John, I mean, this should be fun. You know, as we mentioned, all the snacks, all the scenarios, it should be good times. So let's give it to you. Final thoughts and we'll go to Andy and then we'll do yeah, that. Yeah, uh, great time of sports. I mean, you can say that about like almost every time of the year, but no, we're, we're got lots of stuff going on and um, should be a fun Super Bowl. And yeah, Dave, uh, we'll have to get back on. I don't know, like our golf show is usually after the Masters, but I'd be – you know, maybe like in the middle of March or something. Towards the end of March, we can just kind of hop on and just recap what's been going on over the last month or something. Just make it like a monthly thing because these I tournaments have some juice every week. Yeah, absolutely. I've been thinking about that. I mean, even last year, I was like trying for. I was I was kind of hoping for something like that too. So I'm again. Yeah, once a month is, is good with me. It's Let's funny go. to recap over like a month. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that big time. Like, um, uh, let's. We'll. So I hope we can get Mike in in the mix for that because like Mike would be. Yeah, great. absolutely. Yeah. And you in, you in on, on on some of these too? I know definitely the majors, but uh, if you want to do the other ones, we we well love for sure golf, college basketball. You know, t- I I I'm I'm taking the temperature of college basketball every day with, with cool. the gamble. Cool. Uh, Selection Sunday I mean, podcast is gonna be great. 
Oh, yeah. We can even do it in real time if you want, because now we're on Twitch. Like, we could, like, do it while they're doing it if you want. It's up to you, though, but, like... Too, re too reactionary. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wait, oh, we'll wait. Fuck. I hate when the bracket... <laughs> I hate when the committee gives you, like, an 8-9 game of, like, two teams that you want to both win. And it's like, I can't... Do it off the top of my head. John can probably – Here you go. Like this year, F FAU versus Charleston. There's, there's your 8-9 game. Yeah, yeah. okay. Exactly. <laughs> when you'd rather – yeah, you want FAU to play uh, like West Virginia. Yeah. You want College of Charleston to play, you know, Creighton, something like that. Yeah. After the, after the results tonight, we're setting it up nicely for uh, Tennessee and Rick Barnes to lose again as like a – as a two seat or a three seat in round one. Oh, that's, Man, they, that's... They can't shoot. Yeah. So you're you're funny you mentioned that, John. Like, are you worried that Tennessee might they might not even get a two seed at this point? Well, see, yeah, if they keep losing like they did to Vanderbilt tonight, they won't even get it. They but, lost yeah, to Vanderbilt. Un unreal. Winning, unreal. I had a feeling yeah. that was gonna happen too. I looked at that that game that that those odds. I'm like, oh my god, this would be a prime spot for them to blow another game. You don't want them to completely fall over the cliff because you want them to still be giving yeah. a decent amount of points, and then you can then you can really get the most. Value. <laughs> yeah, you're right though, Andy. If they if they get in the tournament and they're like a seven point favorite against whoever in the first round, that is low hanging fruit for the two for the three of us. That that is going to be delicious. Like if we get that far, but you're right. They have to they have to be good enough to make it <laughs> to be a top seed. So I don't know. It's it's kind yeah. of I like you know I don't pick a bunch of 15 over 2 but I I love picking a 7 over 2 or even a 10 over 2 if if it, if it's if it's right. Yeah, I I hear it. Uh, okay, have a great rest of your night. I'm so sorry that you, you I'm sorry you've been so I'm I hope you get a good rest. Uh, it's so good to see you again tonight though. Thank you for the points uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. I mean, anyway, I think your point's right. We could just do it on a Wednesday and just recap everything. Get uh, that'd be fun. That'd be a fun show. We'll see if we can get some other folks to join us for that. But anyway, guys, this has been fun. Did I go to? Did I go to everybody for final thoughts? Did you? Did yep, you we're good, Dave. We're good. Okay, fellas, thank you again. This is really this is great. Like, enjoy the Super Bowl. I hope uh, all your scenarios go well. And same for college basketball. And uh, we'll do it again soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. All right. Nice to see you all. Good yeah, luck. Same. See you guys. Thanks. Good luck, everybody. Peace. Cheers. All right, that's Andy. That's John. Um, it's good to see see everybody again doing their thing. So uh, that's it for us on Sandwich Sports. But uh, for those of you on Twitch, we're gonna stay. Uh, we're, we'll stay on stream. Um, we're gonna stop the stream just for a moment or two. We'll come back. We'll bring it back, and then we'll we'll go, we'll go right to music. And uh, looking at it, you probably have an extra hour, to, like an extra forty five minutes tonight. So yeah. I, the, the world is your all's oyster, everybody, which also means more chance to get points. I'm going to give a last call for, oh, hang on. Let's, for, for those of you who are listening on the podcast, this has been great. I'm Dave Medin. You can find us on all the socials uh, at Davey's Eating a Sandwich on uh, most of the platforms, except for Twitter, where we're at the Sandwich Show. Uh, thank you again for your, for tuning in, everybody. And, um, and we'll be back in just, a, and uh, we'll be back on the podcast at some point in the next week or so, maybe two weeks. And uh, we invite you to catch up with all of our VODs over on Sa on Sandwich Sports YouTube at Sandwich Sports. So until then, we'll see you on the podcast next time.